Whatever you trust will be where you draw your strength from. Our scripture reading today comes to us from the book of Isaiah, chapter 26, verses 1 through 6. On that day, this song will be sung in the land of Judah. We have a strong city. He set up victory like walls and bulwarks. Open the gates so that the righteous nation that keeps faith may enter in. Those of steadfast mind you keep in peace, in peace because they trust in you. Trust in the Lord forever, for in the Lord God, or in Yah, the Lord, you have an everlasting rock. For he has brought low the inhabitants of the height, the lofty city he lays low. He lays it low to the ground, casts it into the dust. The foot tramples it, the feet of the poor, the steps of the needy. We're in the first part of Isaiah where victory will come after the exile. That these songs give hope and encouragement, and this is a song to be sung in Judah. A Judah that is reformed, by the way, that has passed away from its ancient sins and troubles that had befelled it before the exile. That a return is underway. That God, the rock, the strong fortress, is present with them and will rebuild. Trust. It's an interesting word. At times we use it kind of abstractly. In God we trust. What does that look like? How do you exactly demonstrate trust? Often it's hope. Or it's what we draw life from. Brennan Manning once said, Trust is about paying attention to Jesus and remembering his kindness always. See, trust has to be drawn from something. Trust just doesn't happen within. It has to happen from without. It has to be pulled to something that seems worthy of our hope. We have this reminder that God is an everlasting rock. Now, Rocks have a tendency to stay a while, even as the natural aspects of erosion work their magic. It takes millions of years to wear away mountains. And yet the element of the rock does not change in the process. It remains strong and steadfast. So it's a good comparison that something that seems to appear to us to last forever or has been forever should be the same as we apply to God. Our trust should be in something that is lasting. Chickley Wasu talks about trust in his devotional I will trust. You see, when you, he talks about driving in a fog, and he was taught by his brother an interesting tidbit on how to drive when you are in a fog. He said, when you can't see what's in front of you, use the line as your guide. Even if you can't see in front of you, if you can use the line, you will never drift off the road. The same is true with faith. When life seems a bit foggy, when the road ahead seems dangerous, when life's encounters fog our vision, there has to be a line on the road that we follow. If we just follow the taillights of the other cars, we may drift off the road along with them if they are not following the line on the road. We are sometimes in places in life where we cannot see in front of us there are hardly any promises in Scripture that says no bad things will ever happen to you. The only assurance we get over and over again is that when it occurs, God has not abandoned us. Waves of life's struggles will come upon us. We might get wet in those situations, but the rock that we stand on remains. Life can crash into our experience, but only with our permission can 
life circumstances crush our spirits. There must be in trust a full reliance and dependence on something else. When it's all about us, the cracks appear. The certainties become uncertainties. The confidence wavers. God is all about the journey. Not really about answers, although answers are given from time to time, a journey of development, because if we had all the answers, then we don't have to change. If all the answers are provided for us, then we don't have to grow. If all the answers were given, there would be no need for faith, because the opposite of faith is not doubt. The opposite of faith has always been certainty. Certainty doesn't require trust. We need to be comfortable that in the journey, the line has been given to us. That a process of learning of how to be okay when we have unanswered questions and realizing that whatever happens, whether you wanted it to happen or not, you are still in God's perfect will. And in God's perfect will, if you are in it, it will be much better than any of our plans possibly can conceive. Let us pray. God, thank you for being my rock. In an uncertain world, you are steady, ever-present, and ever-changing. Thank you for being the one in whom, in which, I can put my trust. Help me to remain focused on you in every circumstance, rather than what I see and know about in the world around me. In Jesus' name, amen. Blessings to you and yours this day and always.